Hey, I'm Adam Thompson, and this is what happens when your kids get into your office across Christmas break. Okay, let's get on with things. When I'm not wrangling the aforementioned kids, I'm a consultant in strategy and organizational design, and today I'm gonna to go through how you can get performance by not setting a target. Let's get into it. Now let's talk about the standard way we set things up. It'll look like this, some sort of performance graph, and then what we're gonna be putting on is our target, and then what we're gonna be putting on is, let's say, the performance each month. If higher is better, then what we say is on a month where we come in here for some sort of score, we say, that was us, we did well. On a month we come in here, we carefully explain how things out of our control were what caused it to be lower. Excuse me, what the hell's going on out here? Well, Nick's scared because his eyelids are jammed in his old man's hair. We need a live, was it a live rooster? We need a live rooster to take the curse off Jose's glove and nobody seems to know what to get Millie or Jimmy for their wedding present. Is that about right? That's right. We're yeah. dealing with a lot of shit. And what we've done is we've set up a, basically a system here to guarantee dissatisfaction for everyone. The people receiving the information think here, it's not that weird things happen, you just didn't perform. And then when they receive the information and see this one here, they say, why aren't you always at that level? And what this denies is the natural reality, which is called variation within a system. A much healthier approach is to use a simple thing called upper and lower limits, like this. Very simple diagram. And there we've got performance, let's assume high is better. And here we've got over time. And what we're going to do is instead of saying there's a target, what we're going to say is that there is an upper and a lower limit. So now when we start to plot performance on here, we can start to see things going like this, which is going to be natural variation that's going to occur between periods. And what we can also start to see are potential issues. Because if we're dealing under the old system, whenever we have something that's below the target, we all come down of it like a ton of bricks and we declare problem, we declare emergency. But if we can start to see along these sort of lines, and if we plot the line like this, we can now start to get a shape of how everything's actually looking. And if you look at the way this system is performing, we can see that it's mostly within upper and lower limits, except for this period here. And the traditional spot where the target is going to go is gonna be through here. In these situations here, we are still performing somewhere into where the system will naturally go from time to time. And sometimes it goes up to here, even here was a great month for some sort of reason. What we can do though, is when it does go down to here once, we can wonder what's going on because we put our lower limit at a limit that's reasonable. And there's an issue here and there's an issue here as well. Using upper and lower limits is a more common sense way to manage any system. Imagine if we plotted what time you arrived at work every day, assuming for the sake of it, that you left the house the same time every day. The single thing that decides when you get to work is not your skill as a driver. Your skill as a driver requires you to be competent. If you literally can't see, if you're praying in the car, then we're gonna have a problem. And that would show up as something here, something particularly bad performance. And in that case, what we can do is have a conversation with you about what's wrong. Maybe you need some glasses, maybe you need some driving education. In other words, some sort of fix or some sort of training. If, however, let's say this is performance of individual people, and you're the person that's consistently performing coming in here, at this one here, and this one here, and this one here. You're not the best performer in the team, but you are within the lower limit. So in other words, you are fine. And this gives us a much better way to look at how performance works because it stops the constantly demoralizing approach of people feeling that they're not actually at target. And remember, whenever you do achieve a target, all you've got then is another one and another one. So now you're gonna ask, what do we do about improvement? Well, first, let me get rid of this. And now let me explain what improvement looks like when we start using these limits. Now, what we're going to be doing is we'll look at the shape of the lines as we plot them inside of here. And they might look like this. Our first goal is to reduce variation because the more we can consistently say what performance is, the more confident our stakeholders and our customers are going to have. So the first objective is not necessarily to lift up this lower control limit, assuming higher is better. It's gonna be tempting to do that to always improve, but we can only improve something if we've got some sort of control over it. So a much better approach is to investigate why these extremes occur. If you don't know a light bulb's a three-way light bulb, it messes with your head, because you go to turn it off and it just gets brighter. <laughs> like, damn it, light bulb, that's the exact opposite of what I want you to do. And see what we can do to start to move them in this direction, like that. So in other words, what's now happening is, we now have less variation occurring within our upper and lower limits. How do you do that? You're gonna to have to get together and examine what's going on and study the work itself. Now that we've got this a little bit more under control, now we can start to say what might be required to cause a lift up to here. So we wanna still hold the variation about the same in terms of what the distance is. But now what we wanna do is be moving that same variation to here. And that's how we create improvement where we can all work on the system together. No target has been set. Instead, 
a bunch of adults studying the way their system works and looking to improve it. That's all for now. There's an article that goes along with this. You can get to that by going to my blog, zenorganizations.com. Sign up there and you'll get videos to your inbox every week. Otherwise, connect with me on the usual socials and I'll see you next time.